morning. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Henry, this is Lock Valley Farms, and today there's a bit of shearing going on around the farm. Uh, I've asked the shearers very nicely if I can go down there for five minutes and stick the camera in their face, so they've somewhat agreed, so <laughs> I'm going to go down the shed quickly, say hello to all those guys, get a bit of footage of shearing, uh, and then uh, thought I'd go do a bit of a crop inspection with you guys after that quickly. And uh, yeah, I got some other jobs going on around the farm. The spray is broken down, and <laughs> there's a few things like that. Anyway, there's always something for me to fix. So, all right, let's go say hello. These old lazy bones slain in the wool. I'll make sure I stay out of the way here. I'm more of a nuisance than a I'm more of a pest than a help here. Ah. Uh. The joys of trying to make videos for YouTube. I'm just sitting here trying to edit this footage from the shearing shed at the moment and one thing that I did not give even a second thought to was that as I'm standing here in the catching pen, to my left hand side there is a radio blaring out commercial radio tunes. Now, if you know anything much about YouTube, this video is automatically going to get flagged, it's going to get copyrighted and it'll be demonetized so all that hard work that I've done doing this goes right out the window a good one. so what does that mean for you guys as Dan just comes in the catching pen there to grab another sheep well that means that you guys get to listen to my lovely voice for a couple of minutes while these guys shear a sheep uh, as uh, Jack just drags out another one there we've actually got the three shearers there today we got Dan on the left Jack Middle and David on the right there. See the guys, they'll start off shearing the bellies off first, the belly of the sheep, and that's sort of just, they'll cut that off, throw that off to the side like that. That actually gets thrown off into a separate wool pack, that uh, that piece of wool. Uh, they'll then move on, they'll just uh, work on the back legs there, inside, then on the outside, up over the bum. Got young Tom coming down there, they'll He'll sweep up a bit of the, the crappy wool there between the legs and Jaden will pick up a couple of the bellies. But uh, <laughs> David down the end there, he actually said to me when I said I was going to come down and film, he said he had no problem with me coming down there to film because he said, doesn't bother me because you won't be getting me on film. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, you can see him shearing away down the end there. So you can see the boys, they're just working up the neck there now and they'll start to roll those sheep over onto their side. And uh, they'll start doing the, the long blow down the back there. So These guys are real through it. I, I was kind of worried I wouldn't have um, enough to say while these guys were shearing a sheep. But I tell you what, they move. They move very, very quickly. They probably get through around 200 sheep a day each, I would guess, during normal sort of going. It depends on what the sheep are like, whether they shear well or not. But they can cover some ground. And uh, there's three rouseabouts up there. Skirt and wool, um, sweeping floors, repenning, taking out wool bales, and we've actually got the old man there helping out as well because, you know, uh, it's actually really not enough people with, with the three there at times to keep up. You know, if you do have to take out a wool pack or you've got a repen or something like that, they start to fall behind and the fleeces just sort of um, can start mounting up, especially if these guys are moving along. They, they, can, they can get the wool off very quickly. As you see the boys there picking up a fleece and Dan wipe the face and go in and grab another one back too. It looks like Jack's changing out a comb or cutter or something on his handpiece there. Quick sweep, back to it. And uh, this is the skirting table, that's where they're throwing the fleeces out. You just see Jaden about to pick up another fleece here. There is actually kind of a, you know, there's a special sort of way or a specific way, I guess, that you want to try and pick these fleeces up just so that when you throw them out on the skirting table, they're nice and flat and they're up the right way and you can sort of see what you're doing. All they're really doing is they're just going around the outside of the fleece and uh, picking off any crappy bits of wool or daggy bits or anything like that so that 
sort of ultimately you just end up with a nice clean uh, fleece going into the wool press. But the wool press is actually full at the moment. You can see Harold up the back there. He's just um, changing out the wool pack at the moment. So that's another fleece done and that'll probably just go into a pile there I would say. I'll just pile those up, they'll just keep doing that. Keep skirting them, keep rolling them up, keep putting them in the pile. Uh, just one after the other. And there you can see Harold, he's just changing out that wool pack at the moment. Uh, this is when you start to fall behind as a rouse about, you know, when you've got, a, <laughs> you've got some money out changing a wool pack like I was saying. But um, there's no rest. They just, there's no rest, baby. These uh, shearers, they just keep, <laughs> they keep reeling them off. They keep taking the fleece off and... There's no, no, not much downtime as a rouse about. You'll just go, go, go. So, as you can see, the wool packs changed out, and the the clean ones are going in. They'll fill that that up, and I think those wool packs take about 190 or 200 kilos from memory. So they take quite a bit of weight. You just keep filling it up and pressing it down, and in goes another one. It's very repetitive. And there's the, all the shorn ones, guys, ready to go back to pasture. Um, I'll show you what's going on up at the house though to support cheering. Oh, I'm about to take it down. Oh, food. Smoko, morning Smoko for the shearers. Uh, it's part of the job. Or, oh, it's part, yeah, well, it's part of the gig that you got to feed them. Smoko, morning Smoko, 9 30, lunch, lunch at 12, and then afternoon Smoko again at 3 o'clock. They've got it pretty good, really. Yeah, so they get three meals a day. <laughs> And of course, my lovely wife is preparing all the meals up at the house. So they get looked after. They get looked after pretty well. But then again, it's a tough job. So <laughs> I'd rather them be down there shearing a the sheep than me, put it that way. Yeah, hope they're hungry because they've got quite a bit this morning. That's all right, I'll I can help tidy up any leftovers. Leftovers, yeah. We've got it pretty good too, and they've got uh, <laughs> That's it. prepared for them. Smoko delivery. You want to go down the shearing shed? Come on, let's go. Okay, come on. I've still got to do an interview with you. I haven't okay yet. <laughs> Someone's ready for Smoko? He's happiest when they're shearing. Yeah, he's happiest when they're shearing, that's for sure. That's his spot over there. Yeah. Big shout out to Dan, Jack, Dave, the three shearers, the rouseabout crew for letting me come down there and film for a few minutes. You know, I think I said earlier, I always like to go down and ask those guys first before I go down there with the camera. Because ultimately I don't wanna make someone do something that they're not comfortable with. You know, if one of them says no, they'd rather me not come down there with the camera, then, well, I'm not gonna go and do that. I can't go do that, you know, it's not fair on them. Because at the end of the day, those guys are just trying to, you know, get a job done and me filming a YouTube video is not a passion of theirs, so you know I've just got to be respectful of that as well. But yeah, big shout out to all those guys once again. And I, you know, I've seen <laughs> footage or, or clips of people shearing sheep on on social media, and I can understand why these guys might not really like the idea of me filming because you know there's a lot of idiotic people out there who make idiotic comments you know they'll say oh why well, you got to be so rough with the sheep or why you know look he cut the sheep a little bit there and it's you know this is not a perfect science these guys are holding a handpiece over the top of the over top of the skin cutting the wool off and yeah you're going to get a couple of nicks and that here and there and that's just the reality these sheep have to be shorn there's no way around that you know what are you going to do let their wool grow out till they can't stand anymore uh, you know they can't get up and walk around you know that's just the way it is it has to be done and we're really fortunate to have guys who you know will put in the hard yards and and, and get the shearing done so and you might say well henry why aren't you down the shearing shed helping out more often well because i don't really like sheep <laughs> anyway Ah, spray is broken down. I'm stripping down an auger over there that needs a heap of work. I had the oh look, see the head is gone. That's in at the dealership having a couple of jobs done now, but the feeder house was off that. Managed to get that in there yesterday, so you know my time's taken up with other things, and that's just how it works for us. Uh, I do help out with some sheep stuff here and there, but generally no, I try and take care of most of the cropping side because that's not really Dad's passion. I guess you'd say he prefers to do the sheep stuff, so. Yeah, anyway, 
the uh, sprayer here. We finished off all our spraying the other day and uh, I parked it up in the shed and then I came back to it the next day and moved it and it's got a low engine oil pressure warning light coming on when I started it up. I think it's just a sensor problem but there's no parts in the country. None. So I'm on the prowl. I've got to ring someone in a minute in Victoria I think might have one because this is a very important piece of machinery and we, we can't not have a part for it basically. I was looking online there, I saw, I'm looking for an oil pressure switch for a Cummins engine and Cummins actually have none in stock. I googled the part number and uh, it showed that you guys might keep that sensor in stock. Yeah, so we're showing four here at the warehouse. Yep. Uh, Alright, easy as. Okay. No worries. Thanks mate, thanks for your help. No problem. Cheers. Thanks, Bye. Heck yeah, Google is a magical tool. Ring the dealer, none available, can't tell you when we're going to get them. But uh, $35 for another sensor and hopefully we'll be running again. I'm going to head up to the house here quickly and see whether there's any pickings left from shearing. <laughs> see whether they've left any, got any leftovers from Smoko. They probably don't. Is there any pickings left? There was, one, there was one left but I've just made another two. Oh, okay. Well, I'm very lucky then. Alright, that was a nice cheeky little snack. We'll go around, have a quick scan around the farm and see what the crops are looking like, show you guys how the season is progressing. Now, since I made that last video where I was out spraying, we had, well, if you've been following me, you'd know that it was, we'd had trouble getting out on the paddock because it was too wet. We got out, we got all our broadleaf spraying done, and then um, just as we finished that, we got another 53 or four millimeters of rain in two days, so about a bit over two inches. And we had some minor, maybe moderate flooding at best from that event so there was water running down the creeks um yeah it got <laughs> really wet there for a while so yeah things are looking things are looking real nice at the moment ah ah there you are oh. Alrighty, so I'm just squatted down in a sprayer wheel track here, and this is the barley. Now, all of our barley got dry seeded, so all of it looks pretty well like this, apart from the fact that this has had UAN sprayed on it. Uh, just because the crop was starting to go a bit pale, um, we've had that much rain and it's thickened up that much that our normal sort of fertiliser rates weren't really cutting it, we just needed to come back with something else. And we're basically out of urea anyway, so we thought we'd give that a try, but this stuff here is looking absolutely nuts it's looking so good it's yeah um flying along the head's really uh it's right up the top of the stem in here uh, so this will be punching out ahead very very soon but it's rained that much and it's that damp that if this didn't do four ton if it didn't get any more rain on it i'd be disappointed this year so i don't see uh any reason why it won't do four plus ton with all the rain that's been on it and how advanced it is and how it's looking so the canopy sort of closed over on it and it's just it's wet it's it's really wet under here um you can sort of see as well like it's sort of starting to fall over itself a little bit down here i mean it probably did get a little bit double seeded here because it went around the trough but overall this crop's looking great um got a few bad ryegrass patches there's some acidic ground up here pretty much all of our paddocks have a few spots in them with ryegrass but you just can't come in and dry seed paddocks two years in a row in our area and not have a ryegrass problem. And that's exactly why we go and we spread lime in the paddocks because the ryegrass loves growing in those acidic spots. And yeah, that's that's where the problems are. Yeah, overall barley looks freaking awesome. It's gonna make a good crop. The only thing that's really gonna determine how successful it is is whether or not we can get it off without it getting any rain or uh, sort of wind or weather damage before we get to it because that's the thing it might look good now but at the end of the day it's not a good crop until you got it in the bin anyway we'll go on to the next that's yeah like i said that's all the barley we're not going to go look at any other barley because it all looks pretty similar we'll go have a look at the wheat and the beans the wheat's in a couple of different stages so yeah we'll start with the uh most advanced stuff and go to the later stuff Just crouched down in one of the sprayer wheel marks here again. Um, this is the wheat, and it's this stuff didn't get dry seeded. It was put in maybe oh, four or five days after the first rain of the season, so 
It went in pretty quickly. Uh, this is the most advanced stuff for sure. It definitely wouldn't finish off as well as the barley. Like, yeah, if you were to cut this open, the head's probably only just starting to come up the stem, really. So this will need, yeah, look, it'd be nice to get another inch or two of rain or something on it, I guess, maybe at the end of the month or heading into October or in October sometime, just to really finish this off to make it the absolute best that it could be. But I don't see any reason why, if we were to get rain, why this stuff couldn't do six tonne to the hectare without any problems. But, you know, will it? Uh, yeah, well, I guess we'll find out. We'll see how the next sort of four or five weeks pans out. But, uh, you know, what would it do from here on out if for some reason it didn't rain again? I, I don't really know. I'd sort of hope that it would at least go average, you know, three, three and a half tonnes, something like that, because there's there's plenty of moisture under there. There's plenty of moisture under there, and it'll it'll get moving along and finish off pretty quickly. So, as I said before, my biggest concern going forward now, the way they're talking about the weather, is it's not growing the crop. I think we've got no problems growing the crop this year. It's it's going to be, you know, can we get through harvest or get to harvest and get it off before? Mother Nature takes some yield back from us. Okay, we'll head up the road here, have a quick look at the beans, and then we'll look at the wheat that was sown a little bit later. All right, so I am just out in the Farba beans at the moment. Um, yeah, they're looking pretty good. I mean, they're not very, they're not very high. Once again, they're looking like they're probably going to be a short crop. You really need to get these things in early if you want to have a really, and you know, have an early rain if you want them to be a high crop. Because during June and July here, things just don't grow. Especially this year, it didn't rain much and it was just frosty, and so they just struggled from the get go. But as you can see here, we're already starting to flower. So look, it is what it is. It'd be nice if they grow a bit taller. Like once again, there's plenty of moisture here, so if things stay favourable. You know, it keeps raining, it stays cool. You know, I think these things will get quite a bit bigger, but you know, if it dries up from here on out, if we get a, a hot wind, a hot day, a few hot days, that'll really upset the flowering process. So I'm not uh, I'm not holding my breath for anything too spectacular. It'd be nice if they'd do two or three tonne to the hectare. It's kind of hard for me to say. It's only our third year of growing them. We don't have a whole lot of history to go off on sort of, you know, how they're going to turn out. But this is probably the, uh, you know, best job that we've ever done of seeding them. They've gone in nice and evenly, good rate. And I was a little concerned that we'd sustained a bit of mouse damage up in this heavy ground up the top here. Yes, maybe we have taken on a little bit. I'd be surprised if it was more than two or three percent across the whole paddock. And, in saying that, I'd be surprised if any of our paddocks have taken any more than a few percent of damage so, from, from the mice. So, all in all, not too bad. One of my concerns, though, is this is another paddock that had uh, mustard problems in the past, and we're starting to get a few little juvenile mustard plants coming up. Um, we, are, we do have some more mature mustard plants, and to be honest, we probably should have sprayed a better pre-emergent when we seeded this paddock because that would have kept all this under control. But uh, look, I didn't realise, you know, that it was quite that bad. There used to be a fence line running down the middle of this paddock and Dad had a canola crop in here one year and the mustard was bad. So it's not the whole paddock, it's just sort of this one side of the paddock. I'm just hoping that it doesn't end up being too bad, but... Not much we can do about it now, we just got to enjoy it. So hopefully it doesn't look horrendous when we come to harvest time. Rightio, last one is the wheat. We'll go have a look at the later sown wheat. Quick two second plug for the vetch. Uh, if you remember, or you've been watching the videos, I came in and grass freed this paddock in one of those videos, sprayed all the grasses out of it. You couldn't even see the vetch in there. Now there's some sheep in here as well grazing this paddock too and this stuff's just absolutely gone berserk. So looking wonderful at the moment. But yeah, this is all just growing for a break crop, return, nit return nitrogen, spray the grasses out of it and some stock feed for the year. So this will go into wheat next year. Nice and clean, plenty of nitrogen in the soil. Looking good. All 
Alrighty, this is the late sewn wheat that I'm squatting down in here at the moment and this stuff's still got quite a ways to go. Uh, it looks great, there's plenty of moisture there. It's just a matter of what happens from here on out. Are we going to get some more rain? Is it going to stay cool? But there's oodles of potentials here and you know there's plenty of moisture there. This stuff will be right for a long time yet. Overall looks really good, can't complain. Everything's looking good guys, so what can I say, you know? Farming's so much easier when you have moisture. <laughs> so from this point in time, I would expect pretty well everything to go average to above average. Now if we have good favourable conditions and more rain, well it's going to be really good. Really good. We're certainly enjoying a good run here in Mid North SA at the moment. It's, yeah, it's been an incredible run of years, so absolutely no complaints. But just as all bad times come to an end, all good times eventually come to an end too and I'm sure we'll return to some normality at some point. Okay guys, that concludes our little 2022 crop inspection. Uh, key takeaway points for the year are one, average to above average to potentially way above average actually. Two, Weeds suck, especially ryegrass and mustard. Third takeaway point, hopefully next year we get some early season rain and we can get a weed knockdown done before we seed so we're not battling ryegrass endlessly again. And I'm, I'm out of points, I'm out three points for you. So <laughs> fourth point, if you've listened to me waffle on for this long about crops, you're the real MVP. Thanks for joining me guys. I've just got uh, some work to do on this little auger here. The radiator has a leak, the front main seal's leaking, it needs a fair bit of work and I've got a vehicle to service, I'm just going to leave this here. It's probably long enough anyway with me talking about the crops, so thanks guys for joining me. Have a good one, we'll see you next time.